I'm here in the Denneberg Public Library today uh, with Elaine Weber, who has a an open day with a lot of young ladies, and and it's the the Denneberg Spinners and Weavers Club. Elaine, just tell us a little bit about the club. Yes. Well, hello. Our club has been going for 40 years, or well, 40 years next year. We've got our own little uh, cottage where we meet at 30 McPhee Street. We meet Wednesdays in the, uh, for the weavers and Friday for the spinners. Today we're having a, a, a day in the library to encourage some new knitters and spinners along just to have a go and see whether they'd enjoy it. We've got a whole lot of samples here of things we do, um, dyeing and um, crocheting knitted, natural dyed balls, felting, spinning, weaving. We've got a lady over there weaving in the corner. How much work goes into producing something like that? Well, we um, get the raw fleece, card it, spin it, um, ply it, and then wash it, and then th this has been and put in a copper with a lot of sil with silver dollar gum. Yes. And boiled for several hours, and um, that's the colour we get from it. Wow, that's that's really yes. amazing. That. Yes. Well, all this basket is all natural dyed balls. Yes. Onion skins and walnut. Yes. And yes. flowers. So there's a skill, obviously, in being able to spin the wool to yes. get it from the raw into into a yarn like that. Yes. So when you have a breakage, what do you do? Do you just tie like a granny knot or, oh, or, no. or um, a bow? Or, Nothing or like that, no. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean a, like a granny knot. It's just a, like a figure of speech. <laughs> and we'll show you just lie the new piece underneath. Yes. And wait, start spinning and wait till it joins into the wall. It just spins around right. the wall. Right. Keep going. Mm. You keep, keep going. going. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Right, right. Yes. And so from from that uh, raw product, once it's spun onto a reel, uh, you then use it for the knitting of the jerseys, the yes. bags and other well, things? Well, we have to spin two reels. Yes. And then we ply them together. So we spin it back the other way to ply it together. Then it's washed. It's um, washed in boiling water, put in really hot water to start with to get the grease out, and then soapy water, and then it's rinsed and washed and hung on the line and then it's ready to spin. We've got a, a beautiful bag here that's been done. Now that is very interesting. That last, last week we had a microwave dye day where we learnt, everyone learnt how to dye in the microwave and this young lady here took hers home and knitted it and threw it in the washing machine and felted it. She cut a branch and made a button out of it. <laughs> That, and that is it really today. That is, now that's Kiwi ingenuity. It isn't is. It? Bit, yes. <laughs> good old, Very good old much. Kiwi ingenuity using a piece of a piece of branch yes, for button. Yes, and she's our, uh, one of our newest members, so yes. she does very well. Yes. This isn't something else she produced. Out of some felting, we did. We did all did a big block of felt felting, and yes. Marie took it home and made a doll with it. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> I'm sure some young child would, would love to have yes, that. Yes, I'm sure she would. Yeah. So the Is products... Filtered slippers. There. Yes, our slippers. We, we had a class where we had a lady came down from Waipawa who taught us to felt yes. and make the slippers. Yes. I don't, I don't think they'll... F no, they're, they're not going to fit me, no. I think they're Marie's too. Right. Now she's disappeared. <laughs> Yes. So a lot of the you've got a, a lot of different yes. uh, things here. Yes. So do you ever sell any of them, or are they just for oh your own yes, use? Oh yes, quite frequently. No, this is another filter now piece a lady. Look at this. It's done for us. Yes. Pop that back on the. Now that's jeans. Would you like to say about it, Jean? We had um opportunity to make a nice piece of felt, and I don't want to just have a piece of felt hanging around the house and I can't stand felted cushions. <laughs> so consequently, <laughs> we have uh, the felt I made that day 
on the back. Um, the little black patches are, are Gotland, which is the same as the uh, Lord of the Rings. And uh, the, uh, that's what their imaginative uh, cloaks were made of. And in the front there, I've got a piece of every color of wool that I had. <laughs> so we, and I've lined it and tucked it together and looks. Uh, so, so there's, <laughs> so there's a, a lot of work has gone into that. How many hours would you have spent on it? Um, we don't count the hours. I don't, yeah, I was going to say hours aren't really too bad a thing when you're retired. <laughs> it's really cool. But uh, I suppose about five or six. Wouldn't have been many, many more than that because we had a good tutor. So I'd be watching out for Sir Peter Jackson because he may be looking for something <laughs> like that. <laughs> okay, he can come and knock on the door any time he likes. <laughs> day we did Bavarian crochet and um, a lady from Southland taught me how to do it and so we all learnt to do it. And one of our members has done a whole rug in it. She's put sewn all of your bits together there, which is beautiful. It's, it needs to be pulled out. Yes. Yes. So the, so the young lady over there in the, on the end, now she's doing some crocheting at the moment, isn't yeah, she? Yeah, she's doing some of this Bavarian crochet. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So she'll eventually make a rug like that. Right. Now there's a lot of different things, tea cosies, little mats, um, blankets for beds, as we see on the, yeah. the chairs over there. The, and there's a lot of time involved because trying to get the colours yeah. all together, it, obviously there's a lot of wool goes into it. A lot of wool and... And, and all are dying. Most of us are making these with bits of wool we've had over and I think Judith, she, that's wool she had in her stash. Hello Maureen, how are you? Hello, I'm well, how are you? Good thing. Now tell us about your little jersey there and the hat. Well, <coughs> this is for my granddaughter's birthday next week. It's commercial wool, it's not homespun and I made a hat to go with it so it's got the little crocheted uh, flower on it to match the base of the so all these hidden talents are starting to come out that yes. no one knew you had. Oh, some people knew I had them. <laughs> some people knew I could knit. Yeah. Then no, that's, that's what that's for. Yeah. Right, well, and you've made obviously a number of other um, items apart from the, the jersey and the... Actually, I've probably got something here that might help you. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really privileged. <laughs> oh, I've got to move back. That's a big one, Maureen. It is a big EA. Now, are you, are you saying I'm a big, a big guy? Yeah. In love, in love, love, isn't it, Maureen? Yeah. So, yeah, so I, um, I knitted it and um, it's homespun. Wow. And it's lovely and soft, you feel it, and it's warm. I, I tell you what, uh, something like this, we definitely need this on days like today. Yes, <laughs> on the cold days. Yeah, so we make all sorts of things. That is amazing. Make whatever we like. That really? is amazing. Yeah. And you're having a bit of fun with spinning at the moment, putting uh, the raw onto, onto a reel? I am. Um, I'm spinning. Last year we had a dye day out and under the trees in the summertime. And um, this is white wool that has been dyed with flax seed heads. Wow. And it boils away for hours and comes out that colour. Mm. It's amazing. Mother Nature. It's very natural, yeah. The, dyed, the dyes that we did in the microwave last week were they are commercial dyes. This is natural. So no chemicals involved? No chemicals, no. It's lovely, isn't it? So your good husband will be coming home at night looking for his dinner and there's a pot of this boiling on the stove? <laughs> Not quite, no, no. He's got over the tulips being in the fridge, but he, hasn't, he, he doesn't actually see any of this. I do this down at the cottage. Tulips in the fridge? Tulips in the fridge. Why, 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 oh, okay, so that, that keeps them, does it? The bulbs, yes, so he, he's got past that, but no, I do most of this down at the cottage, which we, um, we often do on, on a Friday. Yeah. Hello, Anne, now you've got a weaving machine here, can you just let us know a little bit about it? It's called, it's called a weaving loom, and this is a 24 inch, and they go from 36, you know, really big looms, and um, this is just a small table loom that you put on a table, so it's handy for anybody at home. You can have the bigger looms which have floor pedals, and um, the patterns are done by these heddles, which are um, threaded up in different 
in different um, mediums can put as um, for different patterns. And at the moment, I'm doing triple draft bird's eye, and um, and the threading up's there, and that's the stitches I use. There's 24 stitches to the pattern I'm using at the moment, and um, this is um, um, wool, commercial wool, and this is a um, bouclé. If we just uh, have a look, just show us um, how you would uh, yes, well go we about getting this thing to go. And, um, so I'm just a, sorry, <laughs> in the wrong place. And um, you allow a little bit of give and take because I'll be a step. And then you just press it down and I'm on to the next row. It's all very simple. The threading up is the hardest part to do. This is a very basic loom. It's not a, um, of course, they're all um, into computers and electronics and things now. And then you just continue going. I've done four inches today. But um, we use all different colours. Um, there's five of this, and we've got four ends in the group. Um, one end does all natural hand spun. Yes. Um, uses a hand spun wool. The lady there that's um, spinning there, um, she has her own lifestyle block. Right. And has her own sheep and does it right from the natural. Yes. And doesn't use commercial wool at all. Mm. Just, mm. just have a look at this mm. now. That's commercial. Wool. That's commercial. So yeah. that, so you buy it like that with that that fancy pattern through it. Yes, yes. It's called boucle. Come, you buy it in a cone. We have wool outlets that we go to. Hello Shirley. Now I believe that you're one of the founding members that was involved a lot of work behind the scenes in getting the Spinning and Weavers Club own cottage, is that correct? Yes. In, in 1973 we ran the festival which goes to a different town every year and through that that's the way we got our cottage and it's, it's been wonderful. And it's wonderful to see how everybody loves the cottage. So certainly having your own premises where you can all meet is, is a lot easier than uh, trying to find premises to meet in yes. throughout the town? Yes, and we can also, all the looms for the girls are down there as well. So no, it's really, it's been a marvellous, marvellous thing, it really has. 40 years, that's a very long time to be involved in something like this. Yes, but it just grows on you, it's, it's wonderful. So you obviously enjoy uh, the, the weaving and the spinning side of, yes. of uh, what's involved and meeting all the, the lovely new friends that come through yes, the door? Yes, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so do you uh, travel to meet other groups uh, that uh, do similar um, activities? Some of them do, but I haven't, I haven't done a great deal of that, no. Now, one question I have on my mind, where are all the gentlemen? Well, when we had our festival, we did have a team of men in it, and they were absolutely a hit. They, they really were... They had a great crowd around them while they were doing their spinning. So any men involved in the in the club today? No, no, but we do need men to help us occasionally. So the husbands come in there. So the knitting and weaving certainly just isn't a lady's uh, pastime? No, no, no. Hello, Marie, how are you? Good, thank you. <laughs> now, you're one of the newer members that are along today. Yeah. Yeah, how do you find the group? Lovely, lovely bunch. Yeah, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> hilarious? Okay. What have you been working on? Um, uh, lots of everything. <laughs> lots of everything. So anything in particular? They taught me to crochet and um, I've done blankets and 
that stuff you looked over there before at. And yeah. Right. So you've got a little item sitting here in front of you that you've been working on. Yes, yep. Have. Can we just have a look at that? Oh, it's just the start of the centre of the crocheting. Yeah, so I've been teaching Sandy where she's gone, showing her how to do it because she's um, just starting to learn it as well. Right. So that's the start of something bigger and greater? Yep, it would come out like that. Like this blanket here? Yep. That is amazing. There's a lot of work gone into that. There is, isn't there? It's heavy. It's a lot of wool in it. <laughs> now we're intrigued with this that's hanging around your, your neck and um, that was done by Elaine, was that correct? That's right. She okay. did it for me. <laughs> yeah, that's absolutely amazing, isn't it? So so the bag we looked at before. Okay, we'll just get this baggy. Now, that's intriguing. The <laughs> the piece of branch for a button. What made you think of that? Well, I didn't have a button big enough, so I thought I'll just whip out and chop one off the tree. <laughs> the tree's still standing. Yes, it is. A branch, like, yeah. That, that is... And then I got the drill out and done the holes. Yeah. That's, so how long did it take you to put something like that together? Oh, i done that over two days, just after work and sitting down and, yeah. So, crocheting that you're doing and things like this, it's not only a lady's pastime, but certainly the gentleman's pastime. If they wanted to, yeah, I think you'd be quite surprised too. A lot of men come up to me and say, oh, don't tell anyone, but I knit. <laughs> I have <laughs> to. When they were young, yeah. I have to admit, when I was younger, my grandmother did show me how to crochet, and I still have a blanket today. Yeah, there you go. Hidden talent. <laughs> Hidden talent. Right. So the day has been going really well for everyone here? Yeah, it has. It's really good. Yeah, there's a lot of people popped in to see what we're doing and yeah. So you're saying that they're a wonderful, funny group to, to be with, so you're all telling each other secrets? Oh, no, I don't think so. Hello Pat, how are you? I'm well, thank you. Now you're doing a bit of knitting here. What's involved in knitting? Oh, oh you just knit. <laughs> Very hard. Just just knit. So there's obviously a design that you're using. You, you cast on stitches and you knit and you purl. It's the way you turn, put your needle into each stitch. Elaine, it's been a wonderful afternoon here looking at the group and, and with your open day and what you're doing. So just to um, re-clarify, when does your group meet? We meet on, the weavers meet on Wednesdays from 10 till 3 and then the Spinners knit on uh, uh, meet on Wednesday night from seven till nine thirty, and we the rest of us spinners meet on Fridays from ten till three, and it's our address is thirty McPhee Street. We have and it's Craft Cottage. Yeah. Oh, really good. Well, a wonderful day and a lot of uh, work going on here. Everyone's got their head down, working furiously, aren't they? Yes, they are. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming over to see us. Yes. You're most welcome and thank you for talking with us. Yes, it's been interesting, very interesting. Well, there you go, folks, the Danny Burke Spinners and Weavers Club.